Welcome to this new video, where we will talk about one of the two upcoming implementations that will be game changers for Atom. It's a new paradigm opening up in the Cosmos Hub, starting with Partial Set Security (PSS). In another video, we'll talk about protocol-owned liquidity POL, which will enable Atom to establish itself as the coordinator and bank of the Cosmos through its renowned DAO, and also reaffirm Atom as interchain capital. Until recently, Adam lacked a use case that was truly unique and proprietary. Everything it developed, from the Tendermint consensus to IBC, was adopted and leveraged by other L1s to their advantage. This was what we called the expansion phase of Cosmos, and to ensure its success, it was crucial not to impose any constraints on the development base. Cosmos is the only bottom-up nascent ecosystem in crypto history. But after a phase of expansion and innovation, it's important to cement and stabilize a system that is inherently unstable. For this purpose, Atom has created a framework that stabilizes, secures, and coordinates the ecosystem. This framework is called the Atom Economic Zone and is delimited by the environment secured by the Atom blockchain. It's only a framework. So anything that happens within it has no limits, taking advantage of all the technology born of the chaotic Big Bang of the cosmos. You'll often hear that in the history of Cosmos, the hub is the only layer one that isn't an app chain and doesn't have infrastructure specific to it. That's where the interest of Cosmos lies, and they're not wrong. But if it's the only one not to have such or such other infrastructure, that means its infrastructure is specific, right? Exactly. Atom has the uniqueness of not having an application, which means it doesn't compete with others. This is where a large part of its neutrality comes from, which is crucial for being a coordinator and governor of the ecosystem. On the other hand, this allows it to specialize its consensus for enhanced security by increasing the number of validators, which would be considered cumbersome for an app chain seeking scalability. Additionally, its minimalist infrastructure minimizes the probability of a security breach. In short, Atom has found its product market fit by leveraging the best source of security in the cosmos, its validators. Yes, in this video, we will discuss Atom's specific application, interchain security, and its roadmap towards ICS 2.0. This roadmap towards ICS 2.0 is important as it begins by addressing Atom's scalability issue with ICS v1, known as replicated security. If up to this point, the evolution of the Atom Economic Zone has been limited, it's because we've taken the opposite path of Cosmos's expansion. Instead of allowing the chaos of the free market to prevail, we've implemented a voting system on whether or not to integrate a new chain into the Atom Economic Zone. However, if we impose order in this system, it's for good reasons, since the cost of infrastructure and the leverage on the consensus to be validated for the same stake are imposed on all Atom operators. It's a bit like starting with the endgame of the Atom Economic Zone, inheriting the full security of the hub. However, this model isn't very scalable as it imposes heavy constraints. Each project undergoes thorough filtering by the entire DAO to implement replicated security on chains considered to be of top quality. But there's a solution to this scalability problem that reduces the size of the framework and the lack of free market which diminishes chaos, innovation and sovereignty. It's the ICS 2.0 which enables partial set security (PSS). Instead of replicating the entire set of validators for the chain, it only replicates a subset, a group of validators, to benefit from partial security of Atom, but at a large scale and without the need for permission. The offering of the hub doesn't really change, it just becomes more modular. Until now, to secure another chain, the 180 validators comprising Atom had to agree to form a sovereign unit. With ICS 2.0, each validator becomes sovereign and responsible for choosing the chains to secure. It's as if Atom has divided into 180 protectors, and obviously, with more sovereignty and freedom comes more competition, and thus, an overall better product to offer. We can expect alliances between validators to secure certain chains together, or services that go beyond security, in exchange for more ICS revenue. Staking APRs will vary depending on the validators we delegate to, and we might also see specific airdrops for certain ATOM based on the validators they stake with. The policies and value added by each validator will have much more impact than before. Indeed, this represents a new paradigm for the validators that comprise the hub. The most important takeaway is that up until now, Atom has leveraged its infrastructure and slashing capacity as if it were a single and centralized risk manager. But with ICS 2.0, each validator will represent an independent risk manager. Therefore, one atom is no longer equal to another atom. 
whereas before, the valuation of Atom depended strictly on the revenues of two consumer chains. Now, how do we value an Atom that could potentially earn 30% APR versus 120% APR, depending on how we manage it? If we could initially think of Atom as an investment vehicle, what about the new investment vehicle represented by the validator? Doesn't Atom become a commodity? serving the interchain security network undertaken by a competitive army of validators for these same atoms. ICSv2 disrupts the market's supply and demand dynamics for Atom. By changing the nature of demand, the direct consumers are no longer the chains, but the validators themselves. If we think from the perspective of consumer chains, it seems more affordable and convenient to use the shared security of the hub. It may not seem like a game changer at first, but from the ecosystem's point of view, the potential for chains entering the framework is now infinite, especially as the crypto market has returned to optimism and teams rush to release their products and tokens. The demand for secure infrastructure and Cosmos SDK should reach record levels. This is equally game-changing for the ecosystem that wants to continue expanding as it is for the hub, which maintains a limited supply of validators and tokens, but suddenly opens up to unlimited potential demand. The hub will be composed of 180 replicable validators with a resource of 390 million atoms to meet the security demand of hundreds of chains coming into the cosmos. This surge in demand, along with a free and competitive market within the validator set, hints at a demand shock on the instantly slashable capital of Atom. Eigenlayer and Babylon are not competitors, but rather complements to the security provided by the hub. ETH, BTC and Atom make compromises that turn out to be complementary, as we've seen in a previous video on Babylon. Atom represents the instantly slashable but lightweight capital. ETH represents the slower but also more capitalized capital, while BTC is the largest source of slashable capital, but with a probabilistic finality, hence infinitely slower. However, Atom has the particularity of being credibly neutral but also politically engaged with one of the most active and socially diverse DAOs compared to ETH and BTC, which will be predominantly opinionless and mercenary capitals. With a much more short-termist vision, going from chain to chain, seeking the best available return risk. So, I would add new characteristics to the three sources of proof-of-stake security. Atom represents the community capital, with a soul accompanied by financial support through Pol and Atom Wars. Ethereum represents the global capital, characterized by alignment and real yield superior to ETH staking. Bitcoin represents the impersonal, pure, cold, and unyielding capital. Since Atom is the only restaking chain that provides instant slashing guarantees, consumer chains can interoperate without the risk of rollback. Once a block is validated, it cannot be reverted. Other blockchains can therefore trust every interaction with the ICS chain. This is not possible with Ethereum rollups and AVS, where only pre-confirmations, sometimes from multisigs, are instant. This is not a modularity issue, but a consensus one, as ICS could also be used to decentralize other types of operators like rollups, and this at a time when many are questioning the interoperability between rollups after having fragmented Ethereum so much. In principle, any type of operator can be secured by Atom, as long as they relay information via IBC. The simplicity of Tendermint consensus and the efficiency of IBC make interchain security a product that is both modular and specific. There is no longer any point in asking what Atom's roadmap is after ICS 2.0, as the number of possibilities with partial set security is endless. Many things that we are not yet aware of can be built on top of Atom. It is no longer Atom, but the cosmos that defines the future use cases of Atom. With its competitive operators, thanks to the permissionless nature of the partial set security, Atom could also serve in the abstraction of chains by deploying as solvers. An AI-governed network, Nothing prevents artificial agents from calling on the non-artificial operators of the hub. Private blockchains seeking partial neutrality from a public blockchain? Yes, the future of Atom is in the hands of today's and tomorrow's builders. Now that the tool is permissionless, competitive, efficient and neutral. But in the medium term, the goal of the hub is to abstract the infrastructure and security aspects for Cosmos chains that simply have a product to launch. Cosmos chains will always be sovereign and can always choose their source of security.
However, it's important to remember that resources are not infinite, and focusing on the maintenance and resilience of the infrastructure means less focus on the application in an interconnected and competitive world. If up until now, I've described competition among validators to meet the demands of consumer chains, it's because it's the biggest novelty. But we'll see that consumer chains will also have to offer substantial value if they want access to the best possible security. On April 11th, the ICS 2.0 signaling proposal, validated by the DAO, outlined the mechanisms of partial set security. There will now be two ways to launch a chain secured by the hub. Over the coming months, various updates will replace the current ICS, called replicated security. In ICS 2.0, we will first have the equivalent version of replicated security, which secures promising chains that are in most need of security, like Stride and Neutron currently. This is called the top yen version, where the top n% percent of the validator set must secure the chain under certain voting conditions from the entire DAO. In this case, the top n 95% will be equivalent to ICSv1, and this is what Stride and Neutron will migrate towards. A new parameter, n, ranging from 50 to 100, is introduced for each consumer chain that requests it, meaning the top n% percent of validators must secure the consumer chain. Those not part of this n% percent can still sign up if they wish. Once the proposal is passed, the supplier chain creates a light client on the consumer chain that relayers use to initialize the connection. Relayers then create the channel used for cross-chain validation. If a validator on the supplier chain changes their voting power, this change must be communicated to all consumer chains. If a validator misbehaves on the consumer chain, the supplier chain must be notified so it can slash a portion of the staked atom. Consumer chains may have a native token that is paid as a block reward. At each block, a fraction of block rewards is transferred to the consumer's cross-chain validation module, which is then transferred to the distribution module on the hub via IBC token transfer, which then distributes the tokens to validators and delegators. However, most chains will not launch under top end and will not have to seek permission to launch their chain. The opt-in approach will be more popular. With the opt-in approach, the consumer chain can whitelist, blacklist specific validators and also set a power limit. Cosmos validators who vote yes to the opt-in proposal will replicate their validators to serve the new chain. Validators who vote abstain do not join the validator set of the consumer chain and no vote signal, distrust or a need to renegotiate the terms. It's important to remember that a validator cannot support an infinite number of consumer chains as it will increase their slashing risk with each new chain. Each chain must be worth the risk. To address this, the less promising chains will offer a significant portion of their inflation and revenue to the hub validators. On the other hand, chains with better prospects will be confident enough to offer 15% of their revenue and inflation with almost negligible inflation. Stride is a prime example and certainly sets the standard for ambitious app chains. Another category of chains where hub validators will accept a smaller portion of revenue are existing app chains with a thriving business like Osmosis, Stargaze or Akash. These are chains already in place with shared stakeholders and especially shared validators. Hub validators won't have an additional cost to secure these chains as they already validate them. It's just a matter of mutual agreement to activate the cross-chain validation channel. These chains will also leverage protocol-owned liquidity, POL, for economic alignment. These are easy deals, similar to a soft fork, and are mutually beneficial, expanding the share of the pie for both parties. In conclusion, while we might have previously thought that Atom would never benefit from the evolution of the cosmos by not imposing any constraints and capturing value, Today, in retrospect, with ICS 2.0, Atom could not have hoped for anything better than the emergence of sovereign and innovative chains evolving without constraints, since validators from the first chain in the cosmos are now distributed throughout the entire ecosystem. Atom will certainly share its security with many more chains than we could have hoped for, but without necessarily imposing itself and capturing a large part of the value of these chains. It's important to remember that if all chains in the cosmos use the same set of validators, only those from the hub, the centralization of validators would be an ecosystemic risk that would not differentiate cosmos from other ecosystems. All ecosystems with centralized security like Polkadot or Ethereum face similar challenges. If all Cosmos chains had the validators from the hub, it would resemble more of a Solana-like setup. 
a consensus involving few validators with significant hardware requirements for a large block size. Actually, this project will exist within the cosmos with the implementation of the mega block. However, in addition to a common consensus for perfect composability between app chains, applications will also be able to parallelize different virtual machines in addition to transaction parallelization. But that's the subject for another video. To circle back to what I was saying, it's important to introduce localism into the cosmos to avoid relying on the security of the same validators across the entire cosmos. Thanks to the modularity of ICS 2.0, Atom no longer needs to compromise the localism and sovereignty of Cosmos chains to share its security. Chains can easily have only 20 validators in common with the hub to meet their security needs. Furthermore, this year, with mesh security, there will no longer be a need to have common validators. Simply replicating delegation rather than validators will suffice. However, this requires the implementation of optimistic or ZK proof systems to ensure the verification of other chain states. We're not there yet, but it will be another step towards a security offering from Atom that does not compromise the sovereignty of consumer chains. I know this is already quite a heavy video, but for those who want more details, whether it's about validator profitability, future revenue estimates for Atom, the dynamics and correlations between the number of validators, security requirements, and shared revenue, everything is in this post on the Cosmos Forum. Pro Delegator goes into details that I couldn't cover in this already quite extensive video. I invite you to take your time to read through it carefully. The link is in the description. That wraps up this explanatory video on what's changing for the hub, which will better live up to its name of Cosmos Hub. You'll find links in the description for further documentation. See you soon for the next video. Goodbye, cosmonauts.